In this video, we're going to go ahead and find this indefinite integral that we have here. So if you'd like to give it a go first, pause the video, and then come on back and we'll work it together. Okay, so looking at this integrand, it looks like we have ourselves a fraction, 1 over, and we have the square root of x times this quantity here, which also includes a square root of x. So it seems like this might be a great candidate for a u substitution. So I'm going to go ahead and say this quantity right here is going to be my u. So u equals 4 minus twice the square root of x. Okay, so differentiating both sides here will give me du equals, and the derivative of 4, of course it's a constant, so it just goes away. So the derivative of the square root of x is 1 over twice the square root of x, but we have this negative 2 right there, so it'll actually look like this dx, and we'll see that those 2's will cancel nicely. So du equals negative 1 over the square root of x dx. So solving for this dx, so we can make that substitution, I'll multiply both sides by the opposite of the square root of x, so I will end up with this right here that says the opposite of the square root of x times du equals that dx. Okay, so it looks like we're ready to do uh, some substituting back into this integral to change it from uh, x's to u's. So it looks like we have the integral of 1 over and the square root of x times u, and then that's going to be multiplied by the opposite of the square root of x, du. And from this right here, and we'll see, of course, those square roots of x's cancel very nicely. And so we have this negative here that we could just bring out front as the constant if you want to. So the opposite of the integral looks like just 1 over u du is what we're left with. That is not bad at all. So we know this is just a general formula here. So the integral of 1 over u is just going to be the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. But of course we had this negative out front. Okay, so that's what it looks like we have. And then going ahead and substituting our expression back in that we had for u. So 4 minus twice the square root of x. So we'll see that. It's the opposite of the natural log of the absolute value of 4 minus 2 times the square root of x plus c. So here is one way you could write this, but I'm going to change this just a little bit and we can simplify it down. So we have this natural log here, and so I'm going to rewrite this just a little bit. So it's the natural log of, and I'm going to factor a 2 out of here, so twice the absolute value of 2 minus the square root of x, just like that, which means I have the natural log of a times b, and this 2 out front is my a, and this absolute value is my b. So I could expand that and rewrite that as the natural log of a plus the natural log of b. And the reason I might go ahead and do that is because then I have the natural log of 2 plus the natural log of the absolute value. And this natural log of 2 is just a constant. So I can lump him here with the constant that's already there. So I can just ignore him. So really what I can say for my final answer then is going to be the opposite, because we still have this negative, of the natural log of the absolute value of 2 minus the square root of x plus c. And uh, obviously you look at these and you're like, well, that doesn't actually seem like maybe it warranted going to all that effort because all we did was take the 4 and the 2 down to a 2 and a 1. But uh, probably if you look in the back of a uh, calculus textbook when you're looking at the solutions or the solutions manual or using an online source like Wolfram Alpha and you're doing some of these integrals, you'll see an answer like this and then you might wonder, well, how did I go from here to here? So we went ahead and used this properties of the logs here to go ahead and lump this constant in with the other constant to just simplify it a little more. 